Hello and welcome to project number 8, Digital BCD Timer. Let's have a quick project overview. In part 1 of this project, we are going to implement in Verilog the following files. A Verilog timer, used to count the hours, minutes and seconds. A binary to binary coded decimal converter, using the double-double algorithm. A 7 segment decoder and the top-level module used to integrate all our previously designed modules. Next, we are going to implement a Verilog testbench for the top module and also one for the BCD converter. We are going to do model sim projects and simulations. This is how the timer is going to look on your board when it's counting more than 33 minutes. Also, here you have a picture with the timer counting more than 37 hours. In part 2 of this project, we are going to do the following. We are going to create a Quartus project, synthesize the top module, connect the design to the FPGA pins, and in the end program the DE1 SOC development board and do a demonstration with our project. Also, if you have fewer 7 segment displays, you can also implement this project at least for the seconds. If this is your first FPGA project, I would recommend doing some easier projects before trying this one. Before implementing this cool project, let's analyze some digital timer generics. Our timer is going to contain four counters. A 32-bit counter to count one second. This counter depends on the clock free queue parameter, which can be adapted to your FPGA development board frequency. Next, we are going to use a 7-bit counter to count from 0 to 59 seconds. A similar counter is used to count from 0 to 59 minutes and a 7-bit counter will be used to count from 0 to 99 hours. All the counters generate binary values that will display hexadecimal numbers on the 7-segment display decoders. The hour-hour-minutes-minutes-second-seconds format uses two 7-segment decoders for each counter. So we'll have a total of six 7-segment decoders. Let's analyze now if there are any problems that could occur when the counters will interact with the 7 segment decoders. If we have 0 seconds, then the value in binary is going to be 6b0, which will display on the 7 decoder the value of 00, which is correct. If we have 1 second, then the value displayed on the 7 segment decoders would be 01, which is also correct. The problem occurs when we have 10 seconds. This is because the 7 segment display will display the 0a value, which has the hexadecimal format. For 11 seconds, we are going to have the same problem. So, our current circuit delivers values which are represented in the hexadecimal format. What do you think? Is there any solution to help us displaying from the hexadecimal format to the decimal format? If we want to be able to see the decimal values on the 7 segment displays, we need to use a binary coded decimal converter. Binary coded decimal or BCD is a class of binary encodings of decimal numbers where each digit is represented by 4 bits. If we want to convert from binary numbers to BCD values, we could use the double dabble algorithm. This algorithm can be used to convert a binary number into a binary coded decimal format. This algorithm will translate in hardware into a digital combinational circuit that has a large propagation delay. For example, the minimum value of the input is 00. zero. The output would also be 000. zero, zero. The maximum value of the 8-bit input is going to be FF and the output should be 255. Remember that you can adjust or use this kind of converter in other FPGA projects. Let's analyze now how the double dabble algorithm works. For each group of 4 bit inputs, we apply the following rule. If the value of the group is bigger than 4, then add 3 to the group and then shift left to the output digits. This is how the double dabble algorithm works. This will create a cascade of comparators and adders. Here in the right, we have an 18 bit example double dabble converter from Wikipedia. And here we have an example of how to convert the value 243 using the double dabble algorithm. This region in the left, it is called the scratch pad and is used to process the 8 bit input. The scratch pad is initialized with zeros and then the 8 bit value is shifted left bit by bit. 
What many people do wrong here is that they understand this algorithm and code it using a sequential circuit that does all these calculations. We will implement this as a purely combinational circuit. If you want to read more about this algorithm, I suggest you access the materials from the video description. And now it's action time! Let's implement all the Verilog files required for this project. Remember that the full project can be downloaded from ovisign.com slash courses. Let's analyze now the Verilog code for the binary to BCD converter. Here we have the module name, then you have the clock input, the reset M, the 8-bit binary input and the 12-bit BCD output. Although I said that this is a combinational circuit, I added the clock and the reset N inputs to create some buffer registers for the input and the output. In this way, we isolate this large combinational circuit from the rest of our design. This will give us a higher frequency for the synthesis of this circuit. Here we declare a 12-bit reg value for the scratch space, a 4-bit value for the index, and here we have an 8-bit register for the input buffer, which is here. Here is the part of the Verilog code where the double dabble is actually implemented. Please take your time and understand this code. There are many implementations of this code which are not very efficient and also they are very hard to debug. The Verilog code for this combinational circuit works like this. We initialize the value of the scratch space with zero. Then using a for loop, we use the i index and process all the bits from the input. We shift inside the scratch space each bit starting from the most significant one. After this we apply the double dabble logic. If we are not on the last bit and if each 4-bit value is bigger than 4, then we increment by 3 that specific 4-bit group. Remember that you can update this code to display 4 or more binary coded decimals. We take the value from the scratch space and load it inside the output buffer register. The 12-bit output will contain all the 4-bit values for each of the binary coded decimals. Let's implement now a testbench for our binary to BCD converter. Here we declare the testbench variables. Next we have the parameter where we declare the half period of the frequency. Here we instantiate the DUT and connect the ports of the module with the testbench variables. Next we create the clock signal. And here we have our test scenario. Initially the input binary value is zero. Next we release the reset N and then we change the value of the binary input to 4, 10, 64, 128 and 255. These values should be more than enough to see if our converter works correctly on the waveform. Let's create now a model sim project and start the simulation for this testbench. Please create a new model sim project and start the testbench for the binary to BCD converter. If you don't know how to create a model sim project, you should watch one of our previous projects. Let's analyze now how our module behaves. We select the binary input and next we set the radix to unsign. Now you can see that we have the same values as in our test bench. Next for the scratch space and the BCD output we set the radix to hexadecimal. So as you can see our circuit works correctly because 4 is converted to 004, 10 to 010, 64 to 064, 128 and 255. The OBCD occurs after two clocks because we have the input pipeline and the output pipeline stage. If you want to play more with the test bench, you can add more values inside it and redo the simulation. Let's analyze now the Verilog code for our central module inside this project. Let's implement the timer now. Here we have a parameter for the clock frequency. In my case, it has the value of 50 millions because I have a 50 megahertz clock. Next we have the inputs. And next we have 6-bit outputs for the seconds and the minutes. And a 7-bit output for the hours. We declare a local parameter over here. This local param over here shows us how many clock cycles our internal counter must increment itself before it reaches 1 second. We use clock freq-1 because from 0 to 59 we have 60 clocks. Next we are going to declare all the internal logic variables used to create each individual counter. We are able to model all the four counters using a single always at procedure. The counters 
are going to increment on pause edge clock, if reset n is 0, then all the counters get the value 0. Otherwise, we execute this code over here. If the 1 second counter reaches the 1 second value of the parameter from over here, then we are going to reset the 1 second counter. Otherwise, we increment the counter by 1. I wrote this code in this manner to use an equal comparator and not a less than equal comparator that uses more logic and has a bigger combinational delay. So, your circuit will be faster. When we reach this point in our code, our circuit has counted 1 second. At this point, we should increment the seconds counter. If the seconds counter reaches the maximum value, which is 59, then we clear the value on the seconds counter and increment the minutes counter. Next, in the same manner, when the minutes counter reaches the value of 59, we increment the hours counter. The hours counter will clear itself when it reaches the value 99. This is it, now you have the Verilog code for a circuit that counts minutes, seconds and hours. In the end we connect the output of the module with our internal counters. Now that we have the code for our timer, we only need the 7 segment decoder and we can create our top module. This is the code for the 7 segment decoder. This was explained in previous videos. Remember that this module can be synthesized for common anode or for common cathode configurations. Let's implement the timer top module now. We also have the clock free queue parameter. We have the input clock and the reset n. And here we have the outputs that are going to be connected to the 7 segment digits. Here we declare some internal logic used to interconnect our sub modules. Here we instantiate the central piece of our design. We connect the clock free queue parameter of the timer with the clock free queue parameter of the timer top. Next we have the instance name. And after this we connect the ports of the timer with the internal logic of the top module. We use these wires to take the values from the seconds, minutes and hours. Next we need to convert the seconds, minutes and hours from binary to binary coded decimals. For this, we instantiate three BCD converters. Because the seconds have six bits, we concatenate other two zeros to have an input 8-bit bus. We do the same for the minutes value. For the hours, we concatenate only one zero because it is a 7-bit bus. Next, these 12-bit buses are going to be passed to the output 7-segment decoders. Here we connect the least significant bits of the seconds, and here the most significant 4 bits of the seconds. We proceed in the same manner for the minutes and for the hours. And this is it. Let's implement a test bench now and see if the timer top works correctly. The test bench will also prove that we connected all the sub modules correctly. Let's implement now a test bench for our top level timer module. Here we have the output buses from the 7 segment decoders. We have the ones for the seconds, minutes and hours. Next we have the clock half period, which is 10. And then we have a parameter called clock 1 nanosecond, which should be 10 at the power of 9. I use 10 at the power of 6 to make the simulation 1000 times faster. You should already know by now that simulating seconds or minutes for a digital circuit is a task that takes a lot of time for a simulator to do. Next we create the test bench clock, and after this we have the test scenario, where we reset the circuit, and after this we enable it. The code over here will wait on 60 toggles on hex 0, which should simulate a minute on the circuit functionality. Let's simulate this test bench now. If you want to simulate more than a minute, you can play for example with hex 1 over here or hex 2. If you want to easily master Verilog for FPGA design and verification, I recommend you my course Verilog HDL Fundamentals for Digital Design and Verification. Please create a new model sim project and start the simulation for the test bench for the timer. As you can see, the simulation takes quite some time even if it's made to be 1000 times faster. So, if we look at the seconds counter, it increments to 1 whenever it reaches the value of 50,000 minus 1. When the seconds reach the value of 59, then the minutes will increment to 1. And the same process repeats itself for every second that is counted. Feel free to add more signals inside the test bench to see how everything works. Now we should move to the second part of this tutorial, we are going to implement our project on a real FPGA board. 
Doing this tutorial took a lot of time and effort from my side. If you like this tutorial, please press the like and subscribe buttons. If you like this tutorial and you are interested in an easy path for learning Verilog for FPGA or ASIC design and verification, I gladly recommend you my course Verilog HDL Fundamentals for Digital Design and Verification. You can find the link in the video description. For more tutorials and support, you can join our Facebook community. Your strong Verilog foundation is only one click away.